Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Time Travel. Now in today's episode, we're going to be traveling back to the year 2010 and taking a look at the Alienware M11X gaming laptop. Now before we get into this, I got to give a huge thank you to Case as he's the person who actually donated this laptop along with a Toshiba laptop and a bunch of other really cool stuff in my most recent episode of viewer donations. So huge thank you to Case once again for being so generous and being willing to send all this stuff out to me. But yes, today we're finally going to be diving in to the Alienware M11X. Let's say that you were in the market for a gaming laptop back in 2010. Well, I'm sure you would have considered Alienware. Now, whether you love them or hate them, you have to admit that Alienware has been pretty successful in creating gaming specific machines, both desktops and laptops. If you had purchased this laptop, what would you get? Well, this machine cost $800 back then, and that was for the base model. And the base model came with two gigabytes of RAM, a 160 gigabyte hard disk drive, and a 1.3 gigahertz Intel Core 2 Duo. Now, this machine right here has four gigabytes of RAM and case only paid $659 for it. I know this because he sent me the email uh, that he received when he placed this order back in 2011. Yes, he bought this machine one year after it came out, and at that time, the M11X was dropped to a base price of $599. So the additional $60 that he paid was likely to get the additional 2 gigabytes of RAM. In total, he paid $742.67, which is actually uh, quite close to the original $800 uh, M11X. SRP when, you know, when this was first launched in 2010. Of course, that was before taxes and before the shipping and handling charts. So what would $800 get you as the paper falls on the floor there? What would $800 get you in 2010? Well, let's open this machine up or the box up rather and find out. Now, if you saw the viewer donations episode, you'll know that we already opened this thing up and uh, took a look at it, but we did not power on the machine. But I'm going to go through the contents of the box once again for those of you who happen to not see that video. So in here, you're going to have your power cable and your power adapter right here. You're going to have your uh, reinstallation CD for Windows 7 Home Premium 64-bit, obviously with the Alienware uh, branding on it. And you have your little manual. So we'll set that aside for now and we'll move the accessories box off screen. And now... Let's uh, move these over here and take a look at the laptop itself. One of the things that I really like about this laptop is its design and its form factor. This is a smaller form factor machine. In fact, you just saw, I'll put it on screen here again. Here is how a standard size DVD compares to the size of the laptop. So this is a numpadless uh, machine. It does not have a uh, number pad on the keyboard. Uh, you do have arrow keys though, they are almost full size, uh, it's not that annoying thing where they cut the uh, top and bottom arrow keys in half and make it these tiny keys, I just am not a huge fan of that at all. And obviously, since you are going to be gaming on this thing, at least that's uh, what most people who buy Alienware machines are going to do, the WASD keys are outfitted with the super cool alien writing on it. Speaking of the keyboard, as with many Alienware machines from this time and still today, uh, you've got backlighting, RGB lighting, you can customize how, how it looks. There's a program for that. You've got the power button up here, which you can also change the color of. The Alienware text on here, which you can't see right now, can also be changed. We'll be diving into the software in a little bit here. Trackpad and your buttons right here. And we'll close it up because I do want to touch on the port selection here on the uh, left and right side, also on the back. So on the left here, you've got uh, your Kensington Lock VGA. You've got a powered USB port. Uh, Ethernet, HDMI, Display Port, Micro, and Full Size SD card slots. Very, very nice. Firewire port right here. If we flip it over to the right side here, you've got two headphone jacks. Can you believe that? Yeah, take that, Apple. Uh, one microphone jack and two USB ports, two non-powered USB ports over here. And if we flip it over to the back, you've got your power port right there. Obviously, very, very important. One of the neat customization options that Alienware allowed you to do is uh, add this 
this customized plate on the bottom of the machine. You could just write whatever you wanted on it. So he actually wrote his gamer tag that he used at this time. And uh, it also, I believe, displays uh, the, the you know, whatever you write in the alien, the super cool alien text up here. And while we're here on the bottom, let's go ahead and remove the bottom plate because uh, this machine is actually very straightforward to uh, get inside of and upgrade the RAM, upgrade the hard drive, put an SSD in here if you want to. You've got a, a set of screws on the bottom. They are Phillips, by the way, so that makes it... Uh, much easier to, you know, take apart. You don't got to go and get a uh, hex screwdriver or anything like that. Ahem, Apple. So yeah, once you've got all those screws removed, the back plate just lifts off like that. And here you are. You got easy access to the RAM, to the hard drive. There's actually an SSD already in here, so that's nice. And you've got the uh, the Samsung battery right here. So yeah, very, very easy access to uh, some common components that you might want to upgrade. All right, so here we are booted up into Windows 7 Home Premium, and Case did uh, reset this to factory settings, and he's even uh, configured the user account uh, to have the name MJD. So uh, thank you for that, Case. And he's also got the drivers right here on the desktop, which uh, I already went through and he uh, installed all of these. So we've got, you know, wireless working. We've got all of the uh, proper, you know, network display drivers. All of that is uh, installed, which is pretty great. And yes, if you haven't already been able to tell, we have a custom skin applied to Windows Explorer. And this is all made possible by, you guessed it, Stardock Window Blinds. Yes, Window Blinds makes yet another appearance on the channel. We've talked about this a couple of times, most recently in in the Nintendo window blind skins video because yeah believe it or not Nintendo or at least Nintendo of Europe back in the mid 2000s partnered up with Stardock to release a set of window blind skins based around various Nintendo characters and consoles it was very cool very unique and we did a video on it uh, if you happen to miss it you can go check it out up in the cards but uh, yeah it makes an appearance once again because Dell or Dell slash Alienware because Alienware was owned by Dell at this time partnering up or I would assume contracting Stardock to create a custom Alienware themed window blind skin. Uh, we can see this if we go into all programs, go into the Dell folder and go into my colors. Uh, now this is a Stardock program. My colors essentially is a digital distribution platform from Stardock to keep track of your various window blind skins and uh, other Stardock customizations. In this case though, it has some Alienware branding. It's called Alien GUIs or guys. This is still a Stardock program though, as you can see from the about uh, page here. And there's only one theme, it's called breed, but you can switch back to the uh, default Windows theme if you want to uh, do that. You can totally do that here and you get this awesome animation here. Very cool, initializing, super like futuristic look in there. And uh, oh, it actually applied the Windows Classic theme for some reason. I did not want to launch IE apps. Oh, there it goes. Okay, here comes Arrow. Yeah, if you want to swap back to the default Windows uh, 7 theme, you can do that, but we are going to leave it with the awesome breed theme. Uh, I think it looks pretty cool. Uh, it might be too busy or too obnoxious for some people, but uh, hey, everyone's got their own uh, set of preferences when it comes to how your computer looks. Next up, I want to show you the system process properties panel here. I mean, we've already taken a look at the specs. I've already told you the specs rather, but uh, if you were curious, uh, here is the system properties panel. And the specific CPU uh, model number is the Core 2 Duo U7300, again running at 1.3 gigahertz, 4 gigs of RAM, and Case has actually named the machine MJDPC for us. But I'm sure you guys want to see the customizations that we can do to the keyboard and to the Alienware text you see on the display panel and to the power button and all of that stuff all of that is done from within the alienware command center and this right here guys is where the magic happens if you're an alienware user or if you were in the past you know this all too well this is where you can customize uh, essentially every led on the entire system so we're going to start with the alienware text up here and uh, by the way you can make multiple themes if i go up here to the theme uh option in the menu bar you can make a new theme open a theme you can have a theme for every day of the week if you want and so yeah we'll we'll start with changing the alienware text up here let's say i want this to be blue it's not showing up exactly the same color on camera you can also go with this morph option which allows you to choose two different colors and it kind of like pulsates between the two so if you want uh, yellow and blue for example it'll kind of uh, very slowly in the case of this led here pulsate between the two uh 
which, you know, I personally would rather have just a solid color. You can also go with Pulse, which just flashes it, which I think for the for the Alienware text on the display panel, just go with a solid color. So let's maybe make this red. Then let me zoom the camera out here so you can actually see the uh, keyboard and everything. So for the keyboard, let's go ahead and go with, this is where you can really get creative because with the keyboard, I think a, a morph would look uh, really nice. So we'll go with a blue, maybe with a green for the second color here. And uh, you can see how that looks. So it slowly pulsates between blue and green. And uh, well, pulse is where it's gonna be more of a, of, of a flash, like a more static flash there, uh, which I mean, I'm sure somebody prefers this. Me personally, I think the morph is uh, my personal favorite for the keyboard here. Though I, I kind of wish it wouldn't, because you see once it gets to green, it just kind of like flashes abruptly back to blue. I kind of wish it would gradually uh, shift back to blue as well. But you know, it still looks pretty neat. But obviously if you just want a solid color, you can do that. So maybe we want to make this uh, a green solid color. And uh, you've also got the uh, speaker grills on the front, which you can't really see right now, but let me pan down the camera here. So you got these two red speaker grills. I can uh, change those by clicking here. And let's say we want these to be, uh, let's go with the blue. So there you go. This one right here does the LED for the wireless indicator, which is gonna be right up there at the top left. So if I change this to say yellow here, Go with like kind of a bright color you can see it very faintly there changing so there you go honestly like i think somebody could spend like hours in here really you know customizing this to the t and getting it exactly uh, how they want we haven't even touched on the advanced settings yet so this right here gives you even more options uh, you know, as to as to what you can do it's for the Alienware logo. So you can change the color of it and have it changed when it's plugged in and when it's on battery. So say if you want it to be on battery and you want it to be uh, red, like to let you know that it's on battery, uh, charging, you know, it'll pulsate from red to green. It'll flash when it's got low battery. So yeah, this is, you know, this acts as your power uh, indicator light. I mean, that's, well, that's what it is. It's the power button and the power indicator light. Um, and that's just one aspect of this program. That is Alien FX. You've also got Alien Fusion. And Alien Fusion is uh, essentially your, it's a really super cool name for your power plan options. So in here you can choose, you know, your same, this is exactly what you have in the Windows control panel. You've got balanced, high performance, and power saver. So you can tweak all of these settings here. Alien Touch is trackpad specific settings. And Alien Sense is actually pretty neat. This is a kind of security related feature. Uh, it allows you to use facial identification to log into your system. So it's disabled right now, but if I drag this slider up face login this says if the authorized user's face is recognized they will be automatically logged into windows once logged in the alien sense facial recognition software will be turned off then you can bring it up a notch to auto user switching which actually sounds really cool uh, it says that uh, if you have two authorized users or i guess two or more authorized users which is when you know they're they're set up uh, with this program uh, and the program knows what their face looks like say i were to leave the machine and someone else were to walk up and it recognizes their face it sounds like it switches to their user account automatically just as long as the machine hasn't been locked which is pretty cool then if you want uh the most security you can get out of this program or out of this feature you've got continuous security up here which basically makes it to where as soon as you move out of view of the webcam it locks your system you've also got a timer here to where if you don't want it to be instantaneous like if you want it to be a minute after you you walk out of view of the webcam uh you can set it to that you can go all the way up to five minutes or you can make it instantaneous zero seconds to where the moment you walk out of view of the webcam it's gonna lock and uh yeah so that's a, a pretty nice uh security feature there at least it sounds uh cool in theory i wonder how well that it actually worked well i guess it decided to lock the system because well there's no face in front of the webcam right now so uh yeah but this is what it does on the lock screen so it just you know shows you what the camera sees and when it detects your face now, i don't have my face set up with this but i can just i mean there's no password on this account i can just log back in but yeah there you have it guys that is a brief or maybe not so brief this video is going to be i would estimate around 20 minutes long uh look back at the alienware m11x from 2010 
Once again, I gotta give a huge thank you to Case for literally making this video possible, and huge thank you to all of you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this one, be sure to give it a thumbs up, be sure to get subscribed down below, and turn on those notifications to get notified whenever I upload a new video, which I do multiple times every single week. And as always, I will see you all in the next video.